Part 2. In this video, you will once again look at the skeleton and explore the primary bones that influence construction of the body. Skeletal Anatomy of the Male Body I will make another drawing next to the previous sketch. Once again, I will mark the top and bottom edges of the David's body. The distance between them is divided into two equal halves. The mark in the middle will help us to locate the pubic bone of the pelvis. In the contrapposto position, the pelvis is tilted, so I will draw a sloping line to the mark of the axis of the pelvis. Likewise, the spinal column is curved in contrapposto. This is caused by the pelvic tilt. In contrapposto, the pelvis and the shoulders tilt in opposite directions. The pelvis is slightly wider than the ribcage. Its top edge is very close to the bottom of the ribcage. The two collarbones follow the tilt of the shoulders. Their inner ends are attached to the top of the breastbone. The outer ends of the collarbones are connected to the shoulder blade. The shoulder blade has two bony projections that I would like to mention here. These are the acromion and the coracoid processes, several muscles attached to them. The acromion sits above the round head of the upper arm bone, protecting it like a shield. This round head of the upper arm is part of the ball and socket shoulder joint. The socket of this joint is located on the shoulder blade. The David's left arm is bent at the elbow. We can see that the pointed tip of the elbow bone forms a triangle together with the two bony projections of the upper arm bone. This forearm is almost in the supernation position, which means that the elbow bone and the radius are parallel to each other. When drawing arms, it is important to understand the difference between the pronation and supernation positions, as the direction of the forearm muscles will change with the direction of the radius as it rotates around the elbow bone. More than half of all bones in the human body are located in the hands and feet. 